positioning and fundamentals of how it will stand or be displayed to go into making those decisions. Then she heads into pattern making. So here she goes from her sketch to the pattern for her work, which is really awesome to see. And you can tell she has a background in fashion design when you see the steps that go into this, right? Pattern making starts on paper, sketching the places where color change occurs and how the body needs to round out the belly or add a dimension at the top of the wing to include a dart. Decisions will be made for a beak. Should it be made of felt or sculpted out of clay? And in this case, I think she went with felt. And yep, I went with felt to better conform to the head. She says, next is materials. She makes purple bears and blue dogs, but she wants this robin to look like a robin. So the mohair used should be natural. So this is, as far as I understand, real colors from real goats, not dyed. One piece for the head, one for the body, one for the belly, and white under the tail. Black German glass eyes give the robin a lifelike glint. Cindy says, I have found that when developing a new pattern, it's best to use a plain woven fabric for a trial run, and I sew a mock-up, and then I can determine what changes need to be made. It's a very difficult pattern. I will make a second mock-up, but it's less expensive to use a $5 yard of cotton than a $125 a yard mohair. Mohair, because of the pile, adds dimension to any project, so you must view the mock-up knowing that it'll look different ultimately in mohair. Finally, she gets to cutting and sewing the mohair. She says that she's been precise with her pattern, it should all come together and she's an expert so it does i added that part next are the mechanics of jointing the head she uses hardboard discs and cotter pin and inserts a wire armature inside the body it actually turns how amazing is that for support and that terminates in the legs and the face she said she does tiny embroidered stitches and a felt beak with coloring and nostrils added and the eyes are uh, black fact with felt circles to give it that white the body must be stuffed before the wings can be sewn on and the length of the legs determine, uh, have to be determined before the tops of the legs can be sewn on. Lots of details add up to one believable robin. And you can see it in front of you, and here's her photos of that finished early bird robin. And she's got, we've got an aunt joining us in the photo essay. She says, in my walks to collect the odd piece of wood and burl to use with my creation, I found the perfect hunk of wood to mount the robin on, and all I needed was a silly worm to finish the early bird. And one of the things I hope you'll notice from Cindy's essay, I wish you guys could meet her. She's just a wonderfully charismatic, uh, quirky person. And she builds stories for her objects, right? It's not just any bear. Like I said, they have context, sculptural installation, things that go with them. So I highly recommend you visit her website, China Covered Bears.